In this video, I will teach you how to beat your paper pulp for paper making. Please watch the whole video before you begin using the Hollander beater. The first thing you need to do is prepare your fiber for making paper. If you're in a group of three, you will need a pound and a little bit, so maybe a pound and a quarter. If you're in a group of two, then you probably just need a pound. You will take a small stack of hemp fiber. You should prepare some fabric. Your fabric needs to be cut into one inch squares, no larger, and you will have paper to recycle and this should all be high quality paper, so cotton paper or mulberry paper or something similar. In my paper, I used a quarter pound of fabric scraps and approximately two ounces of hemp and the rest of the batch was uh, recycled paper. Use a scale to weigh out your paper pulp then you need to soak your fabric. To soak your fabric, put it in a bucket and make sure it is completely submerged in water and then wait at least 24 hours before beginning the beading process. When you go to start your beading, this would be a good time to start soaking your hemp and your paper scraps. And so similarly, you'll just put those in a bucket and submerge them in water and make sure that all of the little bits of paper are actually getting, like being reached by the water. In the meantime, you can pull the Hollander beater over to the stainless steel sink and begin filling it with water with the hose with the sprayer on it. Fill the Hollander beater about halfway with water at this point, you can turn on the Hollander beater and see if it's clean. If a bunch of debris comes out through that process, you can decide if you want to use that water to just further clean the Hollander beater and then empty it out and strain it, or if you are fine with whatever pulp has been kind of left in the mechanism and you just wanna start adding your fiber. We decided to just go for it that it was clean enough. So here I'm adding the one inch pre-soaked fabric scraps into the beater as it's running. It's important that the Hollander beater is raised up to the setting of 30 when you start it and that you turn it on before you start adding components. And I'm just adding like one piece at a time and trying to make sure that they aren't clumping. And anytime there are long threads, I'm tearing those so that they're shorter because we don't want them to get wrapped around the mechanism. Also, make sure that you are keeping your fingers uh, in between the area that is actually open on the Hollander beater. Never put your fingers under the stainless steel lid near the mechanism or past where that plexiglass lid sits on the top of the beater. Once you've added all of your fabric scraps, you can begin lowering the mechanism with the wheel. And so to lower it, you'll turn it to the left and just turn it kind of slowly. At first, you don't have to be as slow as when you get to the lower numbers, but you can see I'm just cranking the numbers down and I'm listening for changes in the machine. So here is what it sounds like initially. And I'm basically just listening to that sound and listening for changes. So the first thing that will happen is you'll start to hear little clunks from the fabric running into the mechanism and those will become more frequent. Once you start to hear that, you can start to crank a little bit slower. So you can see the dial is going slower now. 
and I'll turn the audio back on so you can start to hear the clunking that's happening. I'm going to crank it a little bit more and then I will let you listen to the frequency of those knocks and I'll show you where I decide to stop. So anytime the noise increases dramatically, you'll want to stop there and let the machine run. Uh, let it run for five to 10 minutes each time you reach a point where you can tell that the machine is struggling a little bit. You can also wear earplugs when you're doing this and there is some ear protection in that room if you want to use it and you can step away from the machine while it's running but do stay in the print studio. Here's a check-in of what it sounds like right now and I think that we can go a little bit further but it's getting close and again this is a quarter pound of fabric if you had heavier weight fabric or a higher percentage of fabric you might not be able to jump all the way down from 30 to 16 or 15 or wherever we're about to stop and now you'll be able to hear the sound level where i stop so we made it to about 15 and then we waited five minutes so we set a timer and then we came back to it so here we are again lowering from 15 and at this point we have to go slower than at the start well, that's being cranked down. I just want to point out that it's possible that your water will be really sudsy if the fabric you're using has gone through a regular wash load with laundry soap. Uh, it often will produce suds like this, and so don't be alarmed. You can scoop some of them off if it's disruptive, uh, but it's fine. You can just ignore it. So this is the actual pace that we were cranking this down and I don't want to change the video because I don't want you to have an unrealistic sense of how fast you might go. Uh, but here in a second I'll give you the audio of the increased sound that was produced as we're getting down to 13 and a little below. Okay, so five more minutes have elapsed and now we are turning down the crank further. So basically you proceed like this, uh, cranking down until there's a noticeable increase in noise or the machine is vibrating a little more and then pausing for five to 10 minutes. And these are the things that I want you to take notes on like how long did you pause, what number was the machine at for each of your pauses. For your fabric, you can crank it down to a number that you decide on. I would recommend somewhere between five and 10. The more, like the lower you crank your fiber down to, the finer your paper will be. Uh, the crispier it might be, but also the slower it would be to drain. All right, so we paused again at nine and then we're waiting another five minutes, but I wanted to show you the quality of the fiber at this point. So I un unearthed it from all of those suds. And after waiting another five minutes, we're cranking down from nine a bit further. So for this batch we brought it down to 7.6 and then we waited another five minutes and at that point we decided to add in the paper. 
Anytime you add new fiber to the Hollander beater, you need to raise it all the way back up to 30. You never want to put a chunk of something in there and then just have it slam into the mechanism before it's had the chance to kind of slowly macerate it. So here you see us quickly raising it up to 30. It's fine if you move swiftly on the way up. You're just being more careful on the way down. Okay, so now the machine is at 30 again and it is on and I am showing you how to deal with the hemp linter. So once the hemp has soaked, it's very easy to tear. And so you wanna tear it up in no more than two inch square pieces. You could do a little smaller. Um, they don't have to be like perfectly sized, but you just want them to be relatively small bits. Um, so I'm adding this in first. And then once you add that in, or even simultaneously with your team, uh, you can start adding the recycled paper bits. And just like the fabric, you want those to be added individually more or less, and you can kind of use the water to help you spread them out. But here you can see I'm mixing the paper with that fabric pulp that you've already started. And the reason you beat the fabric first is that it takes a lot more to break that down. So if you put the fabric in at the same time as the paper, the paper would just turn into pulp so quickly and then you would end up with big chunks of your fabric remaining. Um, or you would have to beat it so long that the paper pulp was just beaten too much. So you follow the same process with the paper scraps as the fabric. Oh, here I've just found a piece of fabric in my paper scraps. So you wanna pull things like that out um, and just set those to the side. Um, but you follow the same process. So you lower the beater to a point where it's making more noise and then you just let it sit for five to 10 minutes and then you come back and lower it further until your paper is beaten to a satisfactory degree. To find out if you have beaten your pulp enough, you can take some pulp in a jar and then add some water to the jar to put it more in solution. And then you can shake that up and look at it through a window or in front of a light and see if there are even dispersions in the water. So you're kind of looking for an even consistency in the liquid uh, rather than major clumps. And so this looks pretty even with the pulp, and so I feel good about it. And we stopped just below six. And it takes quite a bit less time to beat the paper pulp than it does to do the fabric, so just so you know. Also, anytime you wanna turn off the beater, this is important, make sure to raise the beater all the way up to 30 because otherwise you turn off the machine and then you have this big wave of water coming around the bend and that can just kind of slam into the mechanism. So here you see me raising the beater all the way up to 30 again so here you can see our finished paper pulp. And the last thing that you'll wanna do is add sizing. The sizing will make your paper a little bit more resistant to water, to brush, to pen, so that your writing or uh, drawing or painting doesn't bleed into the paper as much. It'll sit on the surface a little better. And so here you can see we are adding two tablespoons and a half tablespoon because we have uh, one and a quarter pound of pulp. But the ratio you need is on the bottle. The sizing lives in the dark room in the refrigerator. So you'll need to go into that room to get it out and then also remember to put it back in there or it will spoil. Sizing might suds up a little bit 
but you can let it circulate like one time through the whole pathway and then you can go ahead and turn the machine off. Just again, make sure that you've already raised it to 30. Now that your pulp is made, you can dump it into buckets. So you'll have to pull the little stopper at the bottom of one end of the beater and make sure you have a bucket below and you'll just wanna catch the pulp in there and it will splatter a little bit. Um, the pulp will come out of your clothing, so I wouldn't worry about it. We have three buckets that you can use to catch the pulp, so I would fill it just three quarter of the way. Uh, once you have some pulp, you can fill your bins for making paper. Um, we poured about half of one of the buckets in each of the green bins and then added quite a bit of water to get to the ratio that you would want first to start pulling your sheets. 